In this video, we are going to look at the employee details that are held within pupil hours, the information that the HR database holds on all employees, and how the system and, of course, the users can make use of that data. Employee records are contained within the schedule module of pupil hours, and having select the branch the employee relates to and the section employee data, the user is presented with a list of all active employees. Inactive employees, employees whose services either not yet commenced or past employees who have left employment, can be viewed by unticking active only and their details will be presented in the pick list on the left. In this example, we'll look at Mr. Aaron Smith and have a look at the data that's held on this employee. Uh, so to start at the top, the branch the employee belongs to uh, is indicated and this can be changed by simply selecting a different branch and saving the record. Cross-branch allocation rights can be assigned to users so that an employee from one branch can be allocated to a location that lives in another branch. Uh, the employee's last name, first name and their short name are presented. The short name or nickname or a name that the employee is known by is presented on uh, certain screens and certain reports. The employee's address is presented and uh, if a valid postcode is entered, then clicking on the compass icon will uh, present a Google Map reference to show you where the employee lives. And this is naturally uh, a useful tool if you're trying to assign an employee to a work location. Uh, it gives you an easy way to check how far away the employee might be from the assignment. The employee's mobile number is entered and the employee's preference with regards to how they are contacted can also be indicated. Um, the system can send SMS messages to employees' mobiles and you can record their preference. So in this case, uh, Mr. Smith is happy to receive communications to his mobile, uh, but his email address is set as the preferred option. If the mobile or the email had been set to no, then any attempts to send messages through the system to this employee would fail. And a second phone number and a third number field are available for the employee as well and as we discussed the email address. In addition to sending messages from within people hours uh, to employees, uh, we can send SMS, email, we can send it by both or we can use the employee's stated preference. Uh, clicking this icon will launch the mail client of whatever device you're using the message will be sent outside of people hours. Um, a simple free form notes field uh, to regard notes relating to the employee, whatever you need to record that might be appropriate. And uh, the tick toggle um, either activates or deactivates the tell me features uh, for this employee. Tell me is the employee app and a set of features within people hours. Um, and as I said, if this was untoggled, this employee, uh, Aaron Smith, would not be able to log on to tell me and use the, uh, the system. This section indicates the last three occasions the employee logged on via tell me uh, and checked their schedules. Um, reports exist that provide additional details, but the last three are indeed indicated here. So if the employee uh, had used the system to have a look at their work schedule, in this case, we're looking at this month, or in this case, the assignments he's worked on and the assignments he's due to work on. Uh, and because uh, we have with rates set, the employee can see the pay rates that relate to this duty as well. This can be turned off so the employee can see this detail without the pay rates. And of course, they can move backwards and forwards to see previous months' uh, work. The Tell Me application includes different roles. Uh, and these can be assigned to individual employees. So this employee, Alan Smith, has been assigned all the roles, uh, supervisor, patrol learn mode, uh, manager mode, etc. Uh, so to pop back to the app, uh, this officer has access to the manager mode and they can do such things as employee lookup. So if this officer searches for his own record, 
and then those details are presented. The ID photo can be updated. Um, so you can take a photo with the device's camera uh, and write that information back to People Hours itself. Similarly, any of the employee's basic details can be amended. Uh, these are the rights afforded by the manager mode. Um, but if uh, the employee only had supervisor mode and did the same thing, found his own record, uh, the information is presented, but there's no opportunity to edit those details. On each page within the employee records, uh, there is a send message button. So if you are going to discuss an employee's uh, holiday, you can send a message from that screen. To move on to the service tab, uh, employees have service periods. Um, a start date, the date on which their employment commenced. Um, a finish date, the date on which their employment ended. Employees with a, a finish date in the past will not be presented on this list as they are deemed to have gone, left the, left the company's employment. The employee is assigned a PIN number. This is the number that is unique to them within the People As application. Uh, it is the number that they use to um, book on, book off and make check calls if they're using the call taker uh, system. And it is also the number that they enter when they log on via Tell Me. A staff number can also be detailed. This can be the same, or it might be an external reference that you use if you export uh, payroll information from people hours to third party applications such as Sage, QuickBooks, etc. Then this might be the, the payroll or clock number. Uh, and employees can be a member of uh, a pay group. Uh, you can define pay groups, and these are ways to uh, cut data for reporting purposes. So this employee is uh, in a pay group called Weekly, and if we were to run a payroll, um, report that um, detailed only the weekly employees, then this employees would be rec um, would be presented. But if we ran a payroll report that only detailed, for example, the cleaners, then this employee's information would not be presented. We have some controls for um, working time directive or minimum maximum hours worked. So in this case, the employee's uh, maximum hours are set at 48 hours, averaged over one week. So this employee can't be scheduled for more than 48 hours a week. If somebody makes a scheduling decision that's, that exceeds that, then the system presents a warning to that effect. This could also be set as uh, an average over a longer period. So in this example now, the employee can work 48 hours as averaged over 13 weeks. This can be uh, a defined minimum value as well, or it can be defined by the number of shifts. So the employee can only work five shifts a week or six, six shifts a week. And this employee only has one service period. But if we have a look at another one, so Mark Andrews has multiple service periods. And these might be used to record a, a gap in employment. An employee might leave and then rejoin the company six months later, in which case they're given a new service period so that there's continuity of their record. You can see the gap in employment. It might also be used to indicate a change in their terms. So um, on the 1st of the 1st, 2002, uh, this employee was uh, in the pay group subcontractor and had a 40 hour maximum hour set weekly. And if we look at their record now for 2012 onwards, uh, they're in the pay group called four weekly. The hours worked um, restriction is still there, but their pay group has changed. We'll go back to Mr. Smith. On the HR tab, details continue for Mr. Aaron Smith. Um, Mr. Aaron Smith's national insurance number. These fields can be uh, regionally or territory aware. So if uh, the equivalent of a national insurance number uh, is different somewhere else, then the field uh, reflects that. So in the US, for example, social security number. The employee's date of birth and their age, uh, nationality, marital status, uh, gender, number of dependents, and details relating to any disclosure reference. So this employee has um, an enhanced disclosure for criminal records checks, and this is recorded here. The employee's next of kin is recorded and presented. Again, we have this uh, compass icon. Wherever we see that, clicking it will open um, a map and contact details for the employee's next of kin. The fields underneath other info are defined by the system users. So these fields here, these examples, driving license, reason for leaving, smoker, working time, directive, opt out. Whoever set this database up, these are the questions that they chose. And you can have one or more um, answers that can be selected. 
and all of this can be configured and selected within static data. So if you need to record information that people ours doesn't natively um, contain within it as a selection field, then you can create the ones that you need. On the holidays tab, employees are assigned an annual entitlement and if need be, any days that they can uh, carry forward from previous years that were untaken and the start of their holiday year. Uh, that might be their anniversary of their employment or it might be uh, a company might have a yearly cycle, 1st of April or it might be the beginning of the year, 1st of January. When an employee is allocated holiday, um, the calculations are made and they are deducted from the entitlement. If a holiday alloca allocation is going to exceed an employee's entitlement, then the person uh, entering the holiday is presented with a warning to that effect. We can see details relating to um, future and past yearly entitlement. So in this case, um, for this year, we can see this employee has 28 days entitlement. 23.86 uh, have been accrued to date because we're approaching the end of this year's uh, anniversary for this employee. Uh, 12 days have been booked, uh, 16 remain after booked, and he's taken 12 and 16 remain after. The employee can also see this detail themselves uh, within the Tell Me app. So if they select the holiday option, they can see uh, the details that we just discussed there, how many days of entitlement they've got left, and they can see what has been um, booked and approved for them so far this year. The user of the system uh, can see a snapshot here for holidays of this year as well, so that they don't need to go and look inside the employee's diary for uh, those specifics. A sickness record is maintained for the employee um, in a similar way to the holiday record. A value is entered um, above which the system will generate the appropriate warnings to advise the scheduler that this is exceeding the number of days sickness that the company has deemed uh, to be a trigger point for them. So in this example with the number five here, on the sixth instance of sickness, the um, warning would be uh, pre presented to the scheduler. Uh, and we can see that for this year so far, um, this employee has taken two and a half days as sickness. Within the employee's Tell Me app and the schedule, if we go back to the schedule, any sickness or holiday or any other events such as training or rest day, anything that's been scheduled to the employee's diary, will also be presented into the schedule for the employee so they can see what has been allocated against their employment record. The Terms tab, uh, this allows us to apply specific terms to uh, an employer that relate to their uh, employment rules. Now these might be um, defining a minimum rest period between shifts. So we might um, have a minimum rest period term that said eight hours, for example. There can be terms that provide a, uh, a bonus payment or indeed a, f a flat rate of pay. If we go to the qualifications tab, qualifications can be assigned to an employee. Uh, so in this case, the employee has an SI pass. This was issued on the 6th of the 3rd, 2019, and it expires on the 6th of the 3rd, 2020. Qualifications can be defined within the system administration section, so you can create as many of these as you need to use. If the qualification does not have an expiry date, in example, this firefighting qualification here, then it's deemed to be everlasting. If the qualification is set on the assignment as being a requirement, then when you make an allocation to schedule a duty to a post, um, the system will have a look here to see if the employee has this qualification and if it's um, still current. Uh, if it isn't, if, if the check fails, then a warning is presented to the scheduler to that effect. Um, we can also record anniversaries of uh, requirements, in this case annual appraisal. So this employee's annual appraisal was due, or is due, uh, 4th of the 7th, 2019, and was conducted on the 4th of the 7th, 2018. Things like uh, ID card expiry dates are also useful. Uh, as well as what we might recognise as the more traditional qualifications, first aid certificate, driving licence, etc. Uh, the employee can also view these qualifications themselves. So the employee can see which qualifications has been assigned to him or her and the date on which they're due to expire. The location tab, the first section, previous work history, this is self-populating. 
If the system has seen an allocation for an employee on a site, then there is a record here. So we can see that these are the sites that this employee has worked on. We can see the date that they were first assigned to this assignment location, and the last date they worked there, the number of hours they've worked, and the number of shifts. So we can see that this employee um, has been to Little Chef, uh, not for quite a while, and has only ever done three hours there. We can mark employees as being banned from certain assignment locations or duties, and then the system will prevent anybody from scheduling the employee to that position. And we can equally mark employees as having received a specific training on a site. So if we mark the assignment Crossroads Motel as requiring specific training, then when we went to schedule this employee, that schedule allocation decision would, would be accepted and the employee would be rostered. But if uh, the employee did not have this training here, then once again, the warning would be presented to the operator doing the scheduling that this employee did not have the required training. We can also mark uh, the employee's usual assignments. We can say these are the two assignments on which this employee most regularly is assigned to duties. They're considered his home assignment, perhaps. On the Equipment tab, we can record, first of all, the employee's uniform sizes. If we're going to allocate a uniform to an employee, then we need to know what size they are. And within the Tell Me app, once again, uh, the employee can see this detail themselves as well. They can see items that have been issued and their uniform sizes. So this employee can make a change. This employee can change the inside leg measurement, for example. Uh, they can decide that from now on it's going to be 24, and they can save that change. Yes, please. And then we'll see that the inside leg measurement for this employee is now 24. Equipment can be issued to an employee from a selected list, and again, the list can be customized to suit your needs and requirements within the administration uh, of people hours. So if you need to add an item, uh, then you can do that with ease. This employee has been issued uh, various bits of kit. So for example, high vi coat, uh, seal number is type four. He's been issued one of these items. Uh, this is the date the uniform was last checked, and this is the date the uniform was due to be checked next. And there's some notes relating to the uniform new at issue. If we look at the employee tell me app, uh, the employee can see what, what uh, item has been issued to them as well. In the, in the case of this high vi coat, they can see the same information. There are, of course, reports that can be delivered automatically to whomever is responsible for monitoring equipment. So when this ear defender's check is due, um, somebody within the organization can receive a report advising them that this information is overdue and needs to be checked, or ideally before. The Notes field allows us to record additional notes relating to the employee. Within the Tell Me tab, uh, we can send a roster to an employee. Uh, we can, in this case, we have Mr. Aaron Smith selected one specific employee, and we can click Send Roster. Uh, we can pick the start date and the end date for the roster period that we're going to send. We can elect to send this via text, email, both, or using the employee's uh, preferred communications method, which we set on the first screen. And we can add additional text if we wish to accompany the roster that we're going to send the employee. But we can do this for multiple employees. So instead of sending it to just Aaron Smith, we can select branch, and we can send the roster, or indeed just a simple freeform message, to all of the employees within this branch. If we want to be more selective, then we can untick all, and we can say that we want to send it to everybody uh, except uh, Mr. Spanner, Mr. Fish, and Ian Bill. Uh, if we click Send Roster Now, then the information will only be sent to those employees. And of course, each of those employees will only receive the roster that relates to their own employment. We can also send uh, messages to be delivered within the app directly. We can also send messages to employees that are not delivered via SMS or email, but are delivered within the Tell Me app. Uh, the employee can select new messages and see any new messages, but they would have an indication on screen anyway if they had a new message. They can see messages they responded to, and they can see messages that they chose to save. The information would be presented on this screen as well. We can indicate that we want a yes, no answer from the employee, and depending on how they respond, that record will be presented here for the uh, whoever's using the system to, to see. The Documents tab we can upload files, documents, and attach to those to the employee's record. 
um, in this example, um, the employee has a scan of their passport, and we can see the history of this. We can see uh, when this was uploaded and who did it uh, and what, what name they gave it. Uh, if we need to, we could amend this. Or we could select Modify and upload a new version uh, of the document. We can click Download, and a copy of the document is downloaded for us for us to view or amend and then upload again. Documents can have review dates, so once again, if we need to schedule reports to whoever is responsible for managing it, they can be advised when any particular documentation needs to be uh, reviewed. Perhaps a uh, visa or right to work certification may need to be um, checked periodically. The additional details tab contains uh, an employee's bank account information. This may or may not be needed to export to third party payroll processing bureaus, for example. And back to the first tab. The information relating to an employee, any changes that are made, um, it's quite simply a, a question of clicking save. So if we want to change the maximum hours this employee can work from 48 to 50, we enter the new value and click save and the change is made. This is reflected immediately across um, the entire database. So from wherever anybody may be viewing this record, um, the information is updated and, and managed immediately. There is a search function. So if the employee list is particularly long, um, albeit alphabetical, it still might be easier to search. So if we want to search for Melly, for example, we can just click search. We can say that we're searching for Melly and click. And we're presented with two records. Melly with 100% certainty. And this one here, because Melee sounds a little bit like Melly uh, and is presented as a possibility with an 83% score. And if we click schedule, it would take us straight to that employee's record. So that's employee details. Information on the system held on employees, how both the system and managers may use it. Thank you for watching.